Hey guys, welcome back to Zach Blog. So, we got an interesting project to look at today. I'm going to take the receiver that came with my RC transmitter, and I'm going to get it to talk to an Arduino. So, there's a few reasons why you might want to read the PWM signals coming off your receiver through an Arduino. One, you may want to add something to your plane or car or whatever. Uh, lights, like LEDs, uh, sounds. You could add an MP3 board and control it through Arduino. There are tons of things you could want to do. And also, on the other hand, it may not have anything to do with existing RC products. You may want to build your own RC robot or something, and this is frankly one of the better ways to control something like that. So, a while ago, like last year, maybe almost two years ago now, I ventured into trying to build a Arduino controlled robot. It mostly went okay. I would call it a success in the end. Uh, the success that I found was after I had done the videos about it, and I kind of just dropped that whole topic before making a third video about it. But Bluetooth was pretty complicated to work out controls and like trying to control things from your phone without a nice analog stick using only buttons it got pretty it got pretty complicated the benefit from coming from uh, bluetooth over to an actual rc transmitter is you have this fine movement on your sticks you've got your throttle stick here which has full movement in both directions and you've got your control surface stick here which also has full control in both directions instead of trying to control something with just push buttons. So anyway we'll take a quick look at the concept and we'll basically put together a proof of concept today and we might revisit this again in the future. So anyway let's go.
Okay guys, so we'll take a quick look at how this is actually wired up. Obviously we've got our Arduino and our receiver here. Uh, from the Arduino I've got 5 volts coming out and going into the rail. Or at least I did. So 5 volts coming out and going into this rail. And then coming off of that rail, right here, going into where the ESC would plug into, so throttle. And then out of the receiver, pick up the receiver again. Coming out of the receiver on our auxiliary labeled gear. I don't know why it's labeled gear, it's the three position on my transmitter. That goes into our breadboard. And from that, we're not touching the power line, but we're taking our ground and commoning it with the ground from the Arduino. So that's going into our ground on the rail. And then the signal is going into pin three. That's pretty much it. So let's go over to the computer and take a look. All right, guys. So over here at the computer, we'll take a quick look at the code. Um, I have just basically borrowed this code from here, uh, benripley.com slash dui slash arduino, three ways to read a PWN signal with arduino. Uh, you guys can grab that link or I'll put it down in the description. Uh, basically I've borrowed this code here, the pulse in function. But I've made a slight change to it. I've also added one line here and a variable here. So basically we're gonna set our pin as pin three. We're going to declare a variable for the value that comes in. And then we're going to declare a value, a variable for the mapped value and then we've got our setup here we're just basically going to set pin 3 as an input and start our serial communications and then the main part of the code the loop here so we're going to take that variable that we declared up here and we're going to measure the length of the PWM pulse and store it in that value. Uh, for more information on the pulse in, uh, just simply Google Arduino pulse in. And here on the Arduino CC uh, learning page, it gives you all the information you need. So basically, uh, we've set it as high, so we're looking to time how long the pin stays high, which is going to tell us how long our PWM pulse is. So once we've got that value, we're just going to simply map that value. These, the value that's going to come into the pin is going to be kind of between these two numbers, and we want to map it from between 0 and 2. Because we're using the 3 position switch, it'll be 0, 1, or 2 depending on the position of the switch. And then right now we're not going to light any LEDs or anything fancy like that. This is just a proof of concept. We're just going to print the new value out to serial monitor. Uh, so basically if we're able to print the value out to serial monitor, we're able to use that value for anything else. So I'm going to turn the other camera on here. And I'm going to plug in the board. Plug in the Arduino like that. I'm going to hit reset and upload the code. Code is now uploaded. I'm going to turn on my transmitter. I'm going to open the serial monitor. As you see here, we're receiving a 2 at the moment. If I flip the switch here, as 
you can see. I'll flip the switch. Now we've got a one. Now we've got a zero. So I'm gonna make a quick change to the code here. Exit the serial monitor. And I'm going to comment out the mapping and show you the actual values that come in. So again, I'm gonna hit reset and upload. You probably won't have to hit reset. I'm having a bit of a driver issue. It still works and everything. I just have to hit reset to upload anything. So that's gone ahead and uploaded. We're going to open the serial monitor again. See, we have a zero. Well, that's interesting. Oh, OK. I probably shouldn't be putting out a value that doesn't exist. Okay, so now that that's done uploading, we'll grab our serial monitor. And you'll see it's roughly 1023 or 1093 that's coming in right now. If I flip the switch to the middle position, we get 1480 to 90 something. And then at the maximum position, we get around 1892. If I stop that, we kind of scroll through here and see 93 looks like the highest value we get. So I put that at 80, so that the highest value is going to be above it. Because we're only using three positions, this works. Uh, sometimes you might have to be a little more precise than that. So as I said, if I flip the switch the other way, we get a 1093. 1086 is the lowest I see here which is lower than the 1095, which will give me the zero. So, if we go back into the code, change the variable back, and uncomment that. I'll re-upload that. And open up the serial monitor. We'll just confirm that still works. So zero. I kind of need the auto scroll on. So zero, one, two. Pretty simple. All right, guys. So that was pretty fun. We were able to take our transmitter, our receiver, and an Arduino, and come up with a completely standalone unit from an RC plane or car, whatever. Um, again, this can have many uses, uh, such as adding something to an existing RC, aircraft, boat, car, whatever, or completely building your own RC unit, a robot, whatever, again. <laughs> um, this could also be handy in building one of those three or six axis, uh, robotic arms. I actually might end up doing that. I've got the 3D printers and stuff, I might 3D print one. I found those kind of cool. But anyway, I think this video is starting to run a little long. I'm trying to keep my videos a little shorter than usual. Uh, viewership, YouTube, all that stuff, you know. So anyway, I guess that's pretty much it for today. I can't think of anything I left out, although you guys will probably figure out what I've left out. Um, as usual, uh, hit the thumbs up if you liked it, hit the thumbs down if you disliked it, uh, click the subscribe button, it's down there somewhere, it depends if you're on desktop or mobile. Um, I've got the Patreon account if you want to help out the channel monetarily, and leave me a comment as always. Have a good one guys.